Hello, welcome to the live. So today is the Black History Month picks. Um, this month is Black History Month, so I'm going to go over uh, my picks for this month. And then just so you know, all of these that are mentioned are on the uh, Books Between Sessions bookshop.org storefront. So if you want to check that out, the easiest way to do it is just to go to booksbetweensessions.com website and then click on the purchase books uh, page. Whether or not you purchase a book, uh, all that I will be mentioning today will be listed on there. So at least you have a place to reference. So today I will be going over these plus an ebook and an audiobook. Um, so I have read all of these books um, mentioned minus one. Uh, one of them I am actually in the process of reading and I'll let you know which one that is when it comes up. Um, so first I'll give you like a rundown of the books and then if you're watching this on the replay on the IGTV um, and you happen to see one that I hold up that you like you could just kind of like scroll fast forward to that. A book if there is just certain ones like you're you're more interested in hearing about so I'll just go through and list the titles to you um, so then you know like what books are covered so one is I'll show you the cover this is a ebook that I read a few months back it's called fire shut up in my bones by Charles M blow that is one and the other one is an audiobook. I actually recommend this as an audiobook because I listened to it by the author and it was great. And that is Here For It by R. Eric Thomas. Here For It or How to Save Your Soul in America. And another one is Colston Whitehead's The Nickel Boys. Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria by Beverly Daniel Tatum, PhD. So You Want to Talk About Race? How to Be an Anti-Racist. Uh, the journal that goes with it, Be an Anti-Racist. And a children's book, Something Happened in Our Town, a children's story about racial injustice. Okay, so I'll go through each of these. Um, so one of them, I'll do this one, the ebook. So the first one, Fire Shut Up in My Bones by Charles M. Blow. So this is a memoir. Um, Charles M. Blow is a black author, is also, I believe he identifies as bisexual. And so this is a story of growing up in the South, uh, what he experienced uh, there within his family, in the community. And also, he also talks about his experience um, going to college and what it was like joining the fraternities. Um, the book also touches on his faith. So there is a lot of discussion about his religion and kind of how it intersected with how he felt about himself, specifically his sexuality. So there are points throughout the book where he also talks about that and also masculinity and like what that looks like. This book is really, really good. I highly, highly recommend it. He's an amazing author. Um, so that is Fire Shut Up In My Bones by Charles M. Blow. Okay. The other one, so I listened to this as an audiobook, Here For It by R. Eric Thomas. And it was after hearing, after listening to this read by the author that from now on, I pretty much will just try to find audiobooks that are read for by the author. I think it, um, it just makes the experience much better in a way because you're, you're listening to it to the, you, you're listening to the book that is written by the person that like wrote it. So when it came to this one, um, amazing author, amazing narrator as well. Um, there are humorous moments throughout this book and the audiobook, and by listening to it through the audiobook, like there were moments where I actually did laugh out loud. So 
And this one, um, so this is also essentially considered a memoir, and this is the author's experience in what he considered as not knowing he was like an other. Um, and his experience with also going to college and becoming accidentally like internet famous uh, by something that he had written and uh, those are in the community thought it was written by a Caucasian person, but it was written by him, a black person. And so there was a lot of um, kind of uproar regarding it. He actually attended the it was like, I don't know if it was like an assembly or something um, talking about the article, which he found quite comical. Um, and so there are definitely funny moments throughout the book and the audio book. And so I, I highly, um, highly recommend this book. It's a really great read and an even better listen. So that is Here For It by R. Eric Thomas. Okay. So another book is The Nickel Boys by Colston Whitehead. So I had um, seen this a lot. This had actually been on my TBR for quite some time. And um, I had been meaning to get it. And so I did get it from a local bookstore here in Orange County called, called Arvita. Um, it's in the city of Tustin. And so when I saw it, I, I immediately picked it up um, just because I, I had seen it so much. And I didn't so much know what it was about. Um, but essentially what this is about is it's a fictional story, but it actually is inspired by a, an actual school. And I'll get into that in a minute. So essentially what it is, is it's like a, a reform school that the uh, main character is sent to following a, um, I guess it was like an arrest, like, but it was really like a complete misunderstanding. And so the main character is sent to this like reform school um with other boys and there was also segregation within this reform school blacks whites um there was one hispanic um male at the school where they didn't know what to do with him so he kept kind of going back and forth between the two um but anyway so at this reform school there was a lot of terrible stuff going down um abuse rape all sorts of mistreatment and violence and labor um, so this is his, his story, uh, the, the main character's story, and it was in a lot of ways very um, heartbreaking too because the way it starts out is um, the, the main character was actually on his path to having a certain life that he had wanted, which was like going to a particular school, academic, highly intelligent person, and just because of like one event, it had gone like terribly wrong and his path was veered off. Um, what else can I tell you without doing like a spoiler? Um, well, anyway, so you have to read it. And so the, the author based this story off of a true, like an actual school in Florida called Dozier School for Boys. And it was actually operating from 1900 to 2011. Um, and the there was a lot of abuse and violence going on at the this particular school in Florida to the point where Florida, um, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement had actually confirmed like this was a place where violence and abuse had occurred. Um, I wikipedia it, which was very saddening. The, Ages of the boys that were at this reform school um, in Florida range from three years old to 11. Awful. So, and, and two, and if you think about it, like, it closed in 2011. Like, that was 10 years ago. So for, like, over 100 years, you know, this was going on, that reform school was there. It was going on. I think there was, like, at one point where it was kind of like a juvenile um, placement place. So, anyway... That is the Nickel Boys. Uh, really, really important read, especially since it's it is more like if in a way like historical fiction, since it was inspired by a true um, a true an actual school. Um, but there's a lot of truth within this, including like racism, segregation, all these um, those all these terrible things. So that is Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. The next one is. Why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria and other conversations about race uh, by Beverly Daniel Tatum, PhD. So this is, an, so I have the old copy. There is like a newer cover. Um, so this book is 
really good and it is written by uh, psychologists who had been studying um, racial identity development for like decades and so this book is really cool in that it's a mix of um, so racial identity development so it will go through from like you know like toddler age up until like adulthood and how racism and racial like development kind of happens and also um, touches on other ethnic other other like POCs uh, Native American Hispanic Asian Pacific Islander like it does touch on the others as well um, more towards the end but what's interesting is it just it, it this book was essentially um, created following a speaking and like workshop that the author had been doing all over which was to um, talk about racial identity development to Caucasians and Blacks and other POC. So that's how this book essentially was born and it's really, I mean, um, you could tell by the text, like it's, it's really good. I feel like it's laid out in a way where like you can follow the timeline of things and um, it's definitely like, I, I think it's an amazing read and what's really interesting is um, there's also periods where you know she's also a mom and at the time I mean like by like when this version that I have came out um, she does talk about her kids and like when they were in their younger years and even how she had used um, where they were at and their developmental age to talk about racial identity development and she even has examples of how she did that kind of more concretely with one of her children when the son was like a toddler age how she had used like different like it, it was really interesting because you know as we know with kids like they'll kind of just say things like they kind of like what they see like they'll say and um one of the questions that her one of her children had said like out loud in the store was like how come that you know that that kid and mom don't match as in like one was lighter skin you know one was darker skin so you know she really um talks about how she how she handled that like in that moment how she talked to her child about that like and took that opportunity to explain um you know race and development and everything so so i feel like this book is good in many ways um and just is uh super super informative so that is why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria okay the next book um so this is one of a few that you've probably seen a lot um so you want to talk about race i read this over the summer um and this is really interesting so essentially it is what it says like how to talk about race when it comes to different um topics and categories um I'll read them to you. What is racism? What if I talk about race wrong? Why am I always being told to check my privilege? What is intersectionality? Is police brutality really about race? How can I talk about affirmative action? What is school to prison pipeline? What is cultural appropriation? Why can't I touch your hair? Microaggressions. Why are our students so angry? What is the uh, model minority myth? So it does touch on Asian Americans. Um, I just got called a racist. What do I do? Talking is great, but what else can I do? So this is one of those books where it's like, it's informative, but it also will take you a step further on how to apply it to yourself and like within conversations with others that you know, in different environments. Um, so this book was really, really good. Obviously, look at my annotations. So I highly, highly uh, recommend this. And that is so you want to talk about race. Okay. The next one, so this one I haven't finished reading yet. Um, this is one of the, this is the one out of all of these that I'm actually currently reading. And like this one, you've probably seen this one a lot. Um, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. And so um, essentially what I've gathered so far is there's a lot of defining terms, which I think is really important. And pretty much right off the bat, starting starting out by defining, you know, what is racism, what is racist, and what is anti-racism, anti-racist. Um, and it does, 
Uh, start with definitions, but it goes over other topics. Power, biology, ethnicity, body, culture, behavior, color, white, black, class, space, gender, sexuality, failure, success, and survival. Um, so I'm excited to continue reading this. Um, maybe I can read you a part of the insert. Anti-racism is a transformative concept that reorients and re-energizes the conversation about racism and even more fundamentally points us toward liberating new ways of thinking about ourselves and each other. At its core, racism is a powerful system that creates false hierarchies of human value. Its warped logic extends beyond race from the way we regard people of different ethnicities or skin colors to the way we treat people of different sexes, gender identities, and body types. Racism intersects with class and culture and geography and even changes the way we see and value ourselves. Um, in this book, the author will help readers see all forms of racism clearly, understand their poisonous consequences, and work to oppose them in our systems and in ourselves. So that's a little synopsis on this book. Um, so with that is this, which I, was, I found super interesting. So I actually received both of these within um, a monthly subscription box. Um, and so I didn't, at the time, like I knew about this one, but I didn't know about this one. Um, and so this one is essentially a really cool, like journal with different prompts um, that essentially kind of coincides with the book. So name five issues, people, or memories that may have prevented you from being grounded in your own equal humanity. So there's like prompts. Um, name three opportunities that impoverished blacks do not normally receive that can keep them from climbing that can keep them from climbing the socioeconomic ladder. Recall a recent racial injustice in society that affected you, made you sad or angry, or prompted you to take action. Why did this racial injustice affect you so deeply? So this is cool. I mean, this book is um, going to be super informative, I know. Um, and then this is also a way to, which is what I like when it comes to books in general, is like a way to extend the learning further. And within this is a lot of critical thinking, a lot of, um, you know, thinking about yourself and like your experience. So I think it's great that there's a corresponding little uh, journal work workbook. Okay. So that is being anti-racist. Okay. The last one um, is a kid's book. And so I originally, I read this um, a few months ago as well, and I originally saw this uh, suggested, I think it was on APA, I think it was APA.org, and it was, um, there are multiple authors. So something happened in our town, a child's story about racial injustice. So essentially what this, uh, it's a children's, it's a children's book um, that has like really cool pictures. Um, so essentially what happens in this book is there is a shooting. Um, yeah. Something happened in our town follows a white family and a black family as they discuss a police shooting of a black man. So throughout this story there you see kind of there's like um, inside the white family and then after the shooting occurs and it talks it looks it uh, will show like their discussions and how they responded to it. You can also see this, uh, my favorite angsty teen sibling here. Um, so after the shooting, it will talk about the reactions from the white family and then um, the reaction of the black family. And so it goes, on how, it goes into how they responded to it. The gold of this book too is in the back where there are discussion questions, right? So we know with kids, um, there's probably gonna be a lot of questions. And what's cool is these books can also be a, a really good learning opportunity. So in the back, it talks about like discussion guidelines, how to address racial bias with children, um, issues unique for African-American families. So, you know, the kids, 
whether if the child is black or if they are Caucasian, Asian, whichever, there, there's probably, there might be some different questions that are coming to, gonna come up. So um, this talks about that, vocabulary, um, and there's like some sample discussion questions and answers. So I think this back is um, really, really helpful. I'll read you some of the questions so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Why did that man shoot those police officers? Why do white people hate us? Sometimes I wish that I was white. What do I do if a police officer stops me? Could I get shot by the police? So these are pretty much some um, possible questions that will come up. There's not all of them, it's like not, not all inclusive, but um, within the beginning of this back discussion, there is some kind of like psychoeducation for parents or caregivers. So I thought that was really cool. So that is something happened in our town, okay? So here are the books, in case you caught on late. Mm -hmm. These. And this top thing is the ebook and the audiobook. So Fire Shut Up in My Bones and Here for It. That's in here, okay? And then these. So if um, you're interested in any of these or you want like a reference for this uh, video, um, you can either save it, you can either click the little dot dot and like save, or uh, the bookmarks, you could like reference this or watch it again later, um, or you can go to our bookshop.org page, um, which I essentially created as a reference for all the videos and suggestions that I do. Um, and like I said, the easiest way to get to that is just to go to the booksbetweensessions.com website and click on purchase books. Um, and then you'll scroll and you'll be able to see this video. It is up now and that is, is titled, um, the title of this lives, which is Black History Month, uh, picks. Okay. So hopefully this was informative or helpful. If you have any, um, uh, book suggestions, leave me a comment, send me a message, email, let me know. Um, as I always say, if anything, it'll end up on a monthly reading wrap up. Um, if I haven't read it and I end up reading it, it will end up on the monthly reading wrap up, um, as well as there's always the potential for it to be on a monthly observance if it happens to fall in that category, as well as the potential to possibly be on an episode of the podcast for 2021. I'm more focusing on having guests on like the authors of books. So who knows? Um, I may end up reaching out to them uh, per your suggestion and um, they may end up being, being on the podcast. So that's always like a cool thing that might happen as well. Um, so hopefully this was informative or helpful. Like I said, the next live will be the last day of this month, which I believe is the 28th and that will be my February reading wrap up. Um, and I do have quite a few um, as always. And um, so yeah, check back for that. And then in March, second week of March will be the next podcast episode, um, which I'm really, really excited about. It's already been recorded. Um, it's just pending going up and that will be the second Tuesday of March. Um, and that one is going to be on teen anxiety and I got the author on. So we will be talking about her book about teen anxiety and all her knowledge and um, what to what to do, what to do with anxiety. OK, so thank you so much for watching and hopefully you have a good weekend.